I'm Judy Gelman Myers with New Jewish Cinema for Jewish Broadcasting Service. And I'm here with Menachem Daum and Oren Rudavsky, and they're going to be speaking about their wonderful film, The Ruins of Lifta. In a valley at the entrance to Jerusalem lies Lifta, the only Arab village abandoned in 1948 which has not been completely destroyed or repopulated. Lifta is now threatened by a development plan for luxury villas that would forever erase its Arab history. The story told by Lifta's ruins and by the people who once lived here challenges the views I inherited as the son of Holocaust survivors. It is here that I brought together a Holocaust survivor with a refugee expelled from this village. Why I should suffer? Why I should no, pay I the price you don't look for like the suffer. thing that others did? In my family, I, I'm lucky. Out of 20 people, I'm alive, okay? So I'm supposed to go back and, and rebuild my life in a country where everybody was killed? They had a war against the Jewish people, not as against... I, as ha what happened here against Palestinian no, people? nobody wanted to kill you. Why? They killed? No, they did not. Why not? Where is my father? So, where is, where is my father? No, no, no. He was killed in the war. As you have the right to go back home, I have the right to go back, back home. But this is your home. But this I haven't the right to come here. The possibility that my parents' Holocaust suffering has distorted my view of the conflict has led me to this place. Each side in the conflict clings to their narrative the Holocaust or the Nakba, the Palestinian exile. But must we really choose between one or the other? Hi, gentlemen. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Thank you for inviting us. Can you describe the, lu the ruins of Lifta and how you both got involved with them? Sure, Owen. Why don't you take it? Uh, well, uh, the ruins of Lifta, Lifta is a uh, village or an abandoned uh, Palestinian village right on the outskirts of Jerusalem. And um, really, Menachem discovered Lifta through a friend of his. Uh, we've both been to Israel many, many times and have never been uh, on a tour or taken to, to Lifta, which is kind of extraordinary because it's, because it's a remarkable Place. It's a beautiful place, and, it, and it's a place with an interesting history. Uh, Lifta is the only village of its kind in that it was emptied in 1948, and most there have been hundreds of Arab villages that have been emptied, but most of them have been leveled or been taken over by Jews and incorporated into uh, Jewish settlements, Jewish uh, moshavs, kibbutzim, or, or neighborhoods. Uh, Lifta is the only former Arab village which is still reasonably intact. There are 55 beautiful, architecturally beautiful stone homes, Very beautiful. Uh, which uh, tell you about the sophistication of the people who once lived here their appreciation for art, for beauty, for the land that surrounded their village. They built their village there because there's a spring right at the bottom. And in the Middle East, where you have a steady supply of water, that's where you build your, your homes. So um, whereas most former Arab villages have disappeared off the map and they've been planted over with forests or they have been, uh, they're no longer there to ch challenge our view of history. Lifta, when you see Lifta, it's unsettling, and, and it, ch it, it challenges some of the simplistic views of history you may have um, absorbed over a lifetime. So Lifta is important because it, it's, a, it's a silent witness to the history of, of the land. So the film is basically about um, the committee to save um, Lifta. Um, what is the ultimate 
objective of the committee and where do things stand now? Well, well, okay. well I, I would say, you know, just uh, I, I would rather present it less simply and say that the film is not just about the, uh, the fear that LIFTA is going to be developed and then uh, it, nothing of its uh, former historical or artistic or architectural uh, beauty will, will remain, but uh, it's also a film about really a co confrontation and a dialogue uh, between uh, two narratives, as, as Menachem puts it, the Holocaust uh, narrative and the Nakba narrative, the Nakba being the uh, exile of 48, and for, for Palestinians and Arabs, Nakba means catastrophe. And so they call the 48 war, whereas we call it the War of Independence, or Jew, most, many Jews call it the War of Independence. For Palestinians, it's, it's the Nakba. And it's really about Menachem meeting a Palestinian for the first time, a gentleman named Yaqub Oda, uh, who came from that village and, and fled it when he was a, a, a young boy. And it's also, as you say, about uh, the efforts of a committee of Jews and Palestinians to attempt to save it from the development plan that uh, the Jerusalem municipality put into place beginning in 2005. This has been going on for a while now. To turn it into luxury? Luxury villas, uh, <laughs> put a, a mall there, there there's hotel. a hotel. Uh, there are some uh, very um, knowledgeable people who are people of goodwill who think developing it would actually be a better way to preserve it because there'd be money put in place to um, to allow for its preservation, whereas now it's kind of falling apart. Uh, that's one perspective on it from people of goodwill. It's not just all people of goodwill don't want it uh, built up, you know. So, so, but that's 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 the effort that's underway. Mm -hmm. The film actually uh, is a continuation of the previous film that Orrin and I made, which was called Hiding and Seeking, in which. Uh, I realized that the trauma of the Holocaust that my parents endured and which they, in a way, passed on to me. Uh, I grew up in the shadow of the Holocaust. I was born right the, the, in a DP camp right after World War II. Um, and uh, I, I viewed history, and Jewish history, through the prism of the Holocaust. And as a result, my parents who came from Poland, who basically painted all Poles with the same brush, that they're all incorrigible anti-Semites. And uh, you, you know, they're, they're, they're all the same. And I, for, for a long time, I believed that. In Hiding and Seeking, um, in a way, I, that view was challenged. I first went to Poland the first time in 1989 with Rabbi Shlomo Karbach, and was astounded by the degree to which I met different kinds of Poles than what I had been raised to believe. And I realized, in, as a result of hiding and seeking in the story that that film tells, that, that I'm not looking at history the way it was, but the way I had inherited and through the filter of the Holocaust. And, I, and then at one of the screenings of that film, I remember somebody in the audience saying, well, you know, maybe you've convinced me in this film, Hiding and Seeking, that there are some good polls. We have people in the film who preserve Jewish memory mm -hmm. and try to preserve Jewish culture and Jewish history in Poland. Maybe you've convinced me there are a few good polls, but what about the Palestinians? Aren't they all terrorists all out to kill us, you know? And I realized I had no experiential answer to that question because I had never met Palestinians. I'd never taken their measure. I'd never tried to befriend one. And I realized that I couldn't really answer that question until I actually made it, made an effort to really befriend a Palestinian in a way that I'd never had such an opportunity. So I went to Israel, and it just so happened, the first Palestinian I really encountered was Yaqub Oda, who is a main <laughs> character in our film, who is, in a way, Mr. Lifter, who has devoted his life since he, he was expelled from the village when he was maybe 10 years old. Um, he's been, his whole life has been devoted to preserving and saving what's left of his village. And I, you know, in, in, perhaps in a naive way, was hoping that, you know, 
instead of solving all our political and differences, why don't we just become good buddies? You know, like let's become friends. You know, and once we get to know each other, and, and uh, you know, then we'll deal with the political issues. You know, in a way. And I thought that by creating, perhaps reversing the order, you usually try to resolve your political differences, and then you try to establish a relationship. Let's try to establish a relationship, and then see if we can uh, resolve or talk about it. Um, and that's part of my education in the film that uh, didn't work out the way I'd anticipated or hoped, because uh, uh, you know, uh, people like Yakub, their overriding passion. I mean, we Jews have remembered this holy land for over 2,000 years. Yakub remembers it from 60 years, 70 years ago. It was his childhood. What it was his childhood. So to, to ask him to, to, and what's really difficult for people like Yakub and others is to normalize the relationship with someone like myself or as an Israeli. They have to maintain this political stance that we are not accepting the normalization of what happened to us in 1948. So um, I didn't succeed uh, in, 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 in first resolve, you know, first dealing with the politics. I see that unlike Poland, where we don't have millions of Jews clamoring to go back to Poland, um, every inch of Israel is, is, uh, is contended and is controversial, and there are opposing sides. So I. I, uh, it was part of my education that things aren't as simple as I'd initially hoped. You also come from a very, um, I believe it was your uncle who was your hero? Uh, my, yes, uh, almost all the members of my, uh, you know, my, 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 entire, my father's entire family, who was the only survivor, my mother uh, managed to survive, but she had a brother who had left for Palestine in 19... 36. He was originally grew up in a Hasidic home. My grandfather was a very Hasidic uh, Ger Jew, who, but my uncle didn't like the passivity of Hasidism, which was, you know, pray for a better day. I mean, he, he was more active and he basically abandoned Hasidism. And even in Poland, he, he organized a, sort of a Jewish defense uh, organization in his hometown of Stanskavola. There. So he, he was devoted to action and protecting Jews. He was also a member of Beitar, a follower yes. of Jabotinsky, and, and, he, was and in, he was in Lehi. Right. So I'm wondering um, if that right, if his narrative had been more left wing, um, rather than extreme right wing, if you would have come to Lifta with a different perspective. Well, I, I, I think I, 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 my uncle was always a presented some uh, standard that I'd always hoped to live up to. I mean, I always would ask myself when I was young, would I have had the courage to to put myself at risk? For others, the way he did, you know, and that's why he was always kind of my hero. Um, in this film, though, I um, once I realized that the story of Lifta in 1948 is not as one-sided as I had always believed it to be. That there were two sides, and by the way, people sometimes <coughs> think that the film is trying to equate the Holocaust and the Nakba. <coughs> and in, in a way, we 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 make it very clear they're not. But they're the two narratives that. My uncle was driven to avoid the Holocaust and come to Palestine and protect Jews. Yakub was uh, is is driven by his narrative, which is to 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 regain his his village and, and his home. So uh, these these the, the, these two narratives, which I have never considered simultaneously, I mean, really come head to head in this film. And I think the way we finalize this confrontation of these two narratives is I think this is the only film in which we bring together a Holocaust survivor and a Nakba refugee, a Palestinian refugee. And um, in the film we try to bring the sur survivor, a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, and Yakub together to see if they could find some common ground. And I, I think that um, confrontation is perhaps the highlight of the film. Mm -hmm. There's there's two questions on the table in the film. One is whether uh, 
whether a Jew from a Jew from Brooklyn and uh, and and Jews in particular can find common ground with Palestinians, whether uh, whether uh, one can understand a narrative which seems to be in direct conflict with another narrative. That's that's sort of the the mega narrative of, of, of the film. Um, and you also asked about Lifta itself because uh, in, intertwined with the story is the question of whether Lifta will survive. But they're, they're really uh, similar stories because Lifta, Lifta will not survive if uh, Israelis and, and Jews and Arabs can't find a way to understand each other's story. Lifta, like many other villages, as Menachem said, were, were once they were abandoned or, or other narrative is that Palestinians were kicked out, whichever, whichever narrative you buy, those villages were then... Well, each village then, was different. Each village was different, but in the end, virtually all of them, uh, the, the Palestinians or Arabs were not allowed back. That's, that we know factually is true, and that is, that is what a lot of the conflict is about today. But there is this one village which can symbolize that which is no more. And the question is whether even that one village will be allowed to remain. And that it's been nominated by uh, UNESCO as a, a World Heritage Site, uh, which is something that the coalition of Jews and, and Palestinians made, made possible. They also made possible a uh, lawsuit which stopped the development plan. So they've had really concrete actions which have stopped that village from being developed. But what remains a question is whether the Israeli government will agree to that UNESCO designation. So if, if the Israeli government doesn't agree to that UNESCO designation, that's, that's their right and the development plan could go forward. So, so you know, the thesis of the film is that there are two narratives. They don't agree with each other. And is it possible that they're still both correct narratives? Is it possible that one can hear both of those narratives? That's what Menachem was trying to do, to hear those narratives and to see if there was a way to forge common ground and whether there's a way to preserve Lifta itself. The obvious question is, what about the right of return? And has this experience affected your views of the right of return? Um, well, a $64,000 question. I mean, I, I uh, you know, for Menachem, this was one kind of journey. For me, uh, it's another kind of journey. I made a previous film called Colliding Dreams uh, about the history of Zionism, really, and the history of the conflict. Um, I uh, believe that uh, there must be some at least symbolic right of return for there to be peace. But we are so far from, <laughs> from that that I'm not sure it's, it's, it's even worth discussing. But, but my personal perspective is that for there to be a peaceful resolution, there has to be some allowance of uh, Palestinian presence, uh, political presence in East Jerusalem, and symbolic right of return. Of course, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of Palestinians who claim uh, some connection to the land or to specific villages in Israel. And they're, they're, it's impossible to contemplate any sort of extensive right of return. So uh, I don't think we're talking about uh, something real here unless we're talking about financial compensation, which there's been for peoples all in, in many parts of the world uh, for, for places that have been taken away from them. So why not Israel if it would bring peace? Uh, as to whether there's any practicality to that, apparently at the moment, not. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, th 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 this is really a, 
a personal film. It is not a um, strategic film on how to resolve all the outstanding intractable problems that have confronted us. I, I, I mean, I try to approach this conflict not from the level of, 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 of the, these two major stories, but trying to bring it down to a very, very personal level. I mean, and it's, it's, it's a film about uh, somebody like myself who, who wants to find a way forward, Yakub, who lives on this land, a Holocaust survivor. I, it's taking the, I mean, in a way, Lyft is a microcosm of the larger conflict. Yes. And it's, uh, while Oren has made a wonderful film, Colliding Dream, that deals with the, the, the larger historical issues, um, I tried to focus in this film on the same issues, but from the viewpoint of some people that the audience can develop some affinity for. And um, Jakub was very clear in his, his desire to make it clear his political position and he, we allow him to make that in the film, that he does believe in a single state between the Jordan, the Mediterranean. It's not, a, in his mind, it should not be a Jewish state, it should not be an Arab state, it should be a state of its inhabitants who create a democratic country based on the laws that they, they mutually agree upon. I don't know how realistic that will be, but, uh, but it's at least it's something to, to consider in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the film, you're speaking with this historian. I, Hillel Cohen. Right. Who points out that the Israeli view of Lifta is very different from the Palestinian view of Lifta. And so can you articulate what precisely the, what is it exactly that the Israelis who are arguing for its preservation what do they want? Why do they want to preserve Lifta? Well, they're, they're, the coalition is not of a single mind. There are different uh, voices on the coalition, even on the Jewish side of the coalition. There are voices who want to preserve Lifta. Um, some, some just want, some want it uh, preserved as a, as, as a place of na nature, beauty, not to be built upon, just leave it the way it is as, as a, as a green site for people to appreciate its beauty. There are others, mostly, uh, who want to preserve it as a place of history, as, a, as an open-air museum of how Arabs used to live before 1948, their architecture, their way of life, to give Jews a better sense of what Arab life was like before 48. And um, there are others who the people of Lifta would like it actually back to, to so, so that they can go back and rebuild their homes at that point. So you, so you have different voices about what should be done with Lifta. And, and there are those who just hope that maybe by not developing Lifta, we're keeping alive the hope that maybe even if we can't resolve these issues right now, maybe in the future we'll be more enlightened. Um. Maybe our children will figure out a way. But as long as we have Lifta uh, as a core, we can use that uh, even if not right now, it doesn't seem reasonable that we're going to make progress, but maybe if we keep that, there's, we're keeping hope alive for a better future. And was there a similar spectrum on the Palestinian side, or was um, it sort of I, I believe I believe the Palestinian side, for the most part, recognizes that, I mean, ideally they would like Lifta to be given back to its inhabitants, but they recognize as part of a one-state solution. As part of the one-state solution. Uh -huh. But they recognize that there's no political reality that is going to permit that to happen at this time. So Yakub says in the film, you know, they're in the court. They're about to present a petition to the Israeli court to not allow Lifted to be developed. He's saying, let them at least keep it like 9-11 memorial site. It's, it's to be protected. And then we'll, we'll see where we go from there. So they, they have their their fallback position is let's at least protect it from the further deterioration and development. Uh, but at the same time, they would like to see the Palestinians who live there be allowed to return. Mm -hmm. What difficulties did you encounter while making the film? I, I think we've been uh, incredibly blessed, actually, in these efforts. I mean, yes, it was hard to make this film because it was hard to find the money to make it. And, 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 and that's always a challenge in filmmaking. But but the reality is, you know, we come from uh, different parts of the Jewish spectrum, but we've, we've learned how to talk to each other. 
that's the kind of dialogue uh, Menachem has very bravely uh, pursued in, in his work, and it's the kind of dialogue that I believe in. It's, it's why we became filmmakers. We want, we want to make the world a better place, and, and through our films, we're hoping to show other people about parts of the world that they would never know about. We, we can't get discouraged. You know, yes, what were the, some of the difficulties in making the film? Um, the realization that uh, the, the realization that that people like Yakub have to be very careful of developing a normal relationship with someone like myself because they are also uh, don't want to be perceived by their fellow Palestinians as softening, as accepting, as normal mm -hmm. the situation of. of that has the occupation that has, that they believe you know ha, has been imposed upon them. So they have to, and in a way that was one of our difficulties with Yakub, who could never really get past the, his politi political grievances, uh, to establish a friendship with a Jew or an Israeli, almost implies like I'm accepting the status quo. And mm -hmm. for Yakub, that's something he can't do. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how difficult it was. And there was one scene in our film where we, we wanted to try to restore the cemetery in Lifta, and we were kind of rebuffed. And one of our members of the coalition explains, you know, he worked in Arab villages to build children's playgrounds. It was okay if the international volunteers would come or others, but for Israelis to come into their village and to build the playground was perceived as getting too close to the occupier. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the, the difficulties, not just of making this film, but of going forward. We have to figure out some way of getting past that. And um, where, how can our viewers see the film? Well, it just finished a run in New York at Lincoln Plaza Cinema, and it's playing theatrically in Los Angeles starting in October 28th. And hopefully in other theatrical venues. And then in the long run, uh, it will be available through Amazon. And But First Run Features is the distributor, and one can find the film there. Terrific. Well, Menachem, Oren, thank you so much. And thank you for this wonderful film. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm Judy Gelman Myers with New Jewish Cinema for Jewish Broadcasting Service. Thanks. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.